Welcome back to the show where I did the emails at the beginning and you're like, ah, ah, ah. And if you're just joining us, you didn't miss the emails. Well, oh, actually, you did. <laughs> but here's the reason why. Because, you know, the guests I have tonight are so, you know, impressive that I'm like, you don't really need me talking, which is what I'm doing now. <laughs> So my first guest tonight is the former National Security Advisor, the former Secretary of State. Uh, her new book, Extraordinary Ordinary People, <laughs> is in stores now. <laughs> Please welcome Dr. Condoleezza Rice, everybody. Dr. Condoleezza Rice. Or may I call you Condoleezza? You may indeed. You look lovely this evening. Is that well, tweed? Thank you. Um, I don't know. I guess so. It's uh, grey and Come white. Come on, you know black. what you're wearing. Yeah, it's tweed. It's tweed. It is tweed. It's tweed. Let's, just, like... let's just call it tweed. Is it scratchy? I always find tweed a bit scratchy when I. I never wear dresses anymore. No, <laughs> no it's really not. It's a nice, soft tweed. Is it? Can yeah. I touch it? Uh, if you'd like. Will there be repercussions? Depends on where I touch right. it. <laughs> well, what about up here in a sort of non-threatening yeah, yeah, area? Yeah, all right. Yeah, you can see. What do you think? Oh, it's nice. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's not like tweed at all. Thank Looks you. a bit like tweed, not yeah, tweed. No, no, no. It's uh, you just have to buy tweed at the right place, and it'll be okay. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, American tweed manufacturers. <laughs> Now, uh, may I ask, before I talk to you about your book, about yes. your name, Condoleezza. Yes. It's such an unusual name, but where is it, it from? It is. Well, uh, Condoleezza comes from Condolcezza, which is an Italian musical term. Really? It means with sweetness. But I have to tell you why I'm named Condolcezza or Condoleezza. You see, my mom and dad had a deal when I was about to be born. Yeah. Had I been a boy, I was going to be named John. And my wow. father, yeah. <laughs> and my father already had the football. Mm -hmm. I was going to be an all-American linebacker. Right. And uh, when I was born a girl, my mother got to name me. And so she started out with Andantino. That meant walking slowly. Didn't like the implications of that. Right. Then Allegro. That meant fast. No, Allegro. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good. Especially okay. in 1954. Not right. so hot. And so uh, she decided on Condoleezza. God, I think Condoleezza is lovely. And do well, you thank call, you. And you go by Condi, though, right? I do, because when I was a kid, my father called me Condo. And uh, I, I adopted Condi in self-defense. Yeah, it's, uh, Condi's better because Condo's a little too apartmenty. Yeah, I agree. You know? I agree. I agree. Yeah. Now this is a this is a, is this your memoir? It is. It's really a memoir of my parents and my grandparents because uh, people always ask me, Craig, well, how'd you become who you are? I said you had to know John and Angelina Rice. Well, yeah, I, I think that, that I mean the 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 groundbreaking uh, situation you found yourself in. They must have been remarkable people. Are they still around? No, no? unfortunately, I've lost them both. Right. That's right. Yeah. I found I wrote a memoir. Probably there was I talk more about getting drunk I, in mine than, than you did. You know. <laughs> Do you talk about getting drunk? Uh, in here? No, not very much anyway. No, I know that we're. Well, let's we talk both, about you getting yeah, drunk, yeah, though. No, no, no. <laughs> we've both written memoirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we have. But so have we, we both gotten coming. drunk, Condi? That's what I'm saying. Uh, like, you worked with Boris uh, Yeltsin a, a little lady bit. Lady never tells, Craig. <laughs> yes, but a politician should. So, <laughs> when. When you worked uh, famously with uh, uh, when uh, George Bush the first, and uh, is that how we were doing it? Now? Uh, Bush George the first. H. W. Bush. H. W. Forty one. Forty one. Right. President, was right. working with uh, Gorbachev. It would right. have been at the time. That's right. And then Yeltsin came in after Gorbachev. Yeah, he did. Right now, Yeltsin was a famous party animal who enjoyed vodka. Did you ever get drunk with him? Uh, is what I'm saying. You you never drink with a Russian. No, I know. I've never done ever. You you spent quite a bit of time there. Didn't I did you? a lot of time. A lot of time. Where, Moscow? Moscow mostly. Went to graduate school there for really? several months, yeah. yeah. I've been there for a couple, I went there for a couple yeah. of months. It's crazy there. No, it's actually a great place, Moscow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. But were you there during the Soviet thing? I was there in 1979. Now, I, I want to put everybody at ease. I was born in 1954. Right. That means I'm 55, so people you don't have great, to start. Thank you, but you, people no, you don't do. have to calculate. I'm it's 55. It's not just, you're 55? I'm 55. Well, you must moisturize, girl. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Because you look lovely. Good, good yeah, family. Yeah, and not teams. everyone can wear tweed. Uh, <laughs> sir, well, I appreciate that. I hear that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, <laughs> please excuse my skeleton, doctor. I, I like now, the skeleton. You, I do. I like him too. Yeah, He's lovely. I like him. Um, yes. 
He doesn't moisturise though. The, uh, <laughs> do you uh, do you find yourself in in the writing of a memoir? People will be fascinated, of course, by the comings and goings of the administrations that you were part of. Right. Did do you go into any of that at all? Is this a personal memoir about how this you? This is really a personal memoir. Right. Both the the extraordinary ordinary people. Ordinary is because my mom and dad were ordinary people. Right. Mother was a school teacher. Actually, she taught Willie Mays. By my the way, my mother was a school teacher. Did your mom teach Willie Mays? <laughs> You have me there, doctor, yeah, but otherwise she was as good. <laughs> and um, my father was a high school guidance counselor, Presbyterian really? minister. So they were kind of ordinary in that way. Yeah. But uh, I grew up in segregated Birmingham, Alabama. That and, must have, uh, yeah, that uh, was the were, extraordinary you would be part. a young, uh, young girl. You'd be still a girl during the initial civil yeah, rights. I was it? a young girl. Yeah. But uh, 1962, 1963, when Birmingham, my hometown, became, became called Bombingham. Yeah. Because bombs were going off in communities all the time. But my parents had me convinced that even if I couldn't have a hamburger at the Woolworths lunch counter, which I couldn't because segregation, you couldn't go to a restaurant, Good you couldn't Lord. go to a movie theater, but they had me absolutely convinced that I might not be able to have that hamburger, but I could be President of the United States if I wanted to be. So they were pretty extraordinary. Yeah, people. they are. That is an extraordinary. Do you, do you think, I mean, your father was a minister. That's a, are you a very um, yes. religious person? I'm a very religious person. Right. My father was a Presbyterian minister. Right. So that are you was a Presbyterian? good. I'm a Presbyterian. I was raised a Presbyterian too. Yeah, but in I'm very sorry. Yeah, but, they, but, you know, in, uh, but <laughs> yeah, the Presbyterians but, and, aren't saying we've yeah, got him no, too. No. No. Well, it's also true that being a Presbyterian in Scotland's a little different than being a Presbyterian in the United States, isn't it? Uh, well, it's kind of uh, where I grew up. It was kind of compulsory. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, you, had to, right. you had to be. Uh, right. But, yeah. well, I guess if your dad's a minister, you kind of have well, to be. Well, my dad a... was a Presbyterian minister, but you know, the good thing is, since he was Presbyterian, he had this youth fellowship, yeah. and he could even have dances at his church because he wasn't a Baptist. Now, could he have dances between black kids and white kids? No, oh, goodness Really? No. Oh my so that goodness. That seems so though. weird now when you think well, of the culture. Well, it does now. Yeah. It does now. But in those days, I did not have a white classmate until I moved to Denver when I was 12. Wow. So Birmingham was pretty segregated. Did you fight any racism in Washington when you went there? Does it still exist? I mean, because I think oh. racism sometimes gets uh, clever and sneaky yeah. and becomes, yeah. you know, people pretend it's other things. Do you know how it shows up? It shows up when people just think that they know what you think because you're black. Because you're black. Exactly. Or, because you're or it shows up because they think you are going to be a little less capable because you're black. It's a more insidious form of racism, actually. What, what, what do you think is, is more insidious uh, for, for you? Or, uh, is, it, is it sexism or racism? What would work against you more? Well, uh, you know, I can't go back and create myself as a white man right. and decide how I would have been. So. Neither can I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I think we have fewer role definitions uh, for black people these days. We can see a black person as Secretary of State, mm. President of the United States. Yes. But for women, I think it's actually still, there's a lot of role definition. She's a woman, therefore. Well, you, you're not my first Secretary of State here, though, because Madeleine Albright's been here. I understand. My yeah, good yeah. friend Madeleine's yeah. been here Are you and Madeleine times. are friends? Madeleine and I are very good friends. That's funny. I'd imagine, be, politically, you're not really... Yeah, but you know, Craig, it is possible to have friends who are Democrats. Well, I wish you would, I wish you would tell that during the elections to all these people <laughs> that are saying that everybody else is a traitor and shouting at each other. And you go, I thought, if you and Madeleine yeah. Albright can be friends, that's a lesson to us all, well, isn't it? Madeline and it's a lesson to us all. You also have to remember I'm in California, so if I don't have friends who are Democrats, I'm not going to have many friends. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. That's but, yeah. but Madeline's father was actually my dissertation advisor. No way. That's right. Really? You guys go back that far? We long? go back that far because when I decided that I was not going to be a great concert pianist, I had studied music from age three. Right. I was going to play Carnegie Hall. I suddenly met kids who could play from sight everything it had taken me to learn when I was uh, 12, 13 years old. So I said, so you, you know thought what? you'd become a Secretary thought, of State yeah, instead. Good yeah, for you. Right, because yeah. I thought I was going to end up teaching 13 year olds to murder Beethoven or maybe uh, working at Nordstrom or something. So right. Not that these aren't good not positions that these to aren't have. Good jobs. Helping you out yeah, here, not that Connie. Helping you out. That's you know right. what I'm saying? I know how to annoy the yeah, people. You don't need to do right. that. <laughs> But in fact, um, Madeline's father is the reason that I went into international politics. You're both remarkable women. I want to yeah. talk to you a little more. Do you mind if we take a commercial break? Yeah, We're still fine. capitalists. You've got it. All right. Uh, <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, Dr. Condoleezza Rice. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, 
that's that's what I thought. Excuse me, they're back. Uh, we're back uh, here with Dr. Rice, who uh, we weren't talking during the break. I was just pretending. Right. Uh, <laughs> Now, in the book, you talk about uh, growing up in uh, Birmingham. Uh, do you still have a place in Birmingham to talk about? I do not, although well, my family is in Birmingham now. Really? Aunts and uncles. Don't they have a very good uh, college football team there? Crimson uh, Tide the or something? Crimson yeah. Tide, it's in Tuscaloosa. Oh, though. is that? It's uh, 60 miles from Birmingham, but the whole state loves Crimson Tide. Well, except those people who love Auburn. Right. Yes. I've got a feeling I've wandered into a very you dangerous have, area. You have. Yeah, it's a very dangerous area. Yeah, yeah, That's sorry right, about yes. that. I did go to a diner once in Birmingham that had, until recently, the best Philly cheesesteak I've ever tasted. Salem's Diner in somewhere in Birmingham. It's very but nice. You went to Birmingham and you had a Philly cheesesteak? I know, I'm a very unusual person. Uh, I, I think I would have uh, recommended the barbecue. Well, in, oh no, I had that too. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, just I'm not a sure. one meal per just town person. Sure. Ah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. Now, what about the, the writing of the book? I thought when I, when I wrote the memoir, in all seriousness, I found it actually a very cathartic experience. And I, and I found out a lot about myself while doing it. Did you? Mm -hmm. Because I, a lot of it I didn't remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, I yeah. had to check with other people. Yeah. Did yeah. you have that? <laughs> and what I mean is, were you drunk for a while? No, I was going to no, no. say, why didn't you remember? No, no. But I won't go there. No, I absolutely, I had to talk to a lot of people. My parents, former students, my parents, former colleagues. Right. I learned how, uh, how much of an impact they had on so many people. It was terrific. Right. I learned uh, that I must have been something else to put up with. You're as something a child. else now, Dr. Well, Rice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. But but as a kid, you know, I was always questioning, I was always saying, Well, tell me why I should do this. So I think being my parents must have been it's kind of a trial yeah, sometimes. I think they'd be very proud yeah. though. I think they'd be very proud I of what so. you've done. I yeah, think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. And what about uh, Washington life? Uh, what what the future for you in politics, if any? I'm staying in California. Uh -huh. I go to Washington fairly rarely. Yeah. I was there last week. Uh, were you? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's nice. I didn't doing? see any political people. Well, everyone's political in Washington, yeah. but I didn't, didn't hang with anyone. I, I don't mind going to Washington. I didn't mind being there for eight years, but you know, I'm a university professor at heart. I'm back at Stanford. I'm teaching. I'm writing, doing things like the Craig Ferguson show. That's, this doesn't count as yes, work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it does. I mean, have you have you been on a book tour? Have you been out? I have been. I've been uh, all over the place, and I'm, I'm headed to a couple other places: Omaha, Boston. Now, do people get in your face at the book signings? Do they start talking to you about specific points of policy during the administration? Well, there you are a few people stuff? who want to talk about policy, but there'll be another book that'll talk about policy. This one's about my parents. Right. This one's about my grandparents. Uh, my life before I became national security advisor. Yeah. And so the next book is uh, after you became National Security Advisor. The next advisor. book is after have I became Have you started National writing already? I have started oh, writing no, already. Really, really? You work yeah. really hard. See, yeah. I hate that. No, 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 no. One of the things that the book uh, tells people is that I was actually not a grind. I was a terrible procrastinator. Really? Oh, absolutely. How come you ended up in politics then, where everyone worked so hard? Well, <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> Are you... Are you a very, are you a very, uh, in your personal life, I mean, with you, you know, being raised and talking about the, your personal life, are you a very politically astute person? Do you, are you very careful with relatives or are you very uh, blunt with them? I tend to be pretty blunt. Yeah. In fact, I think I was known for bluntness even in Washington. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd heard that. Yeah, I wondered if it yeah. went the other way as well, though. I mean, if, for example, if, uh, you know, if someone in your family says, do I look fat in this? The classic, do I look fat in this question, would you answer it truthfully? Uh, yes, I would say, you know, that's actually a lovely dress. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. You could be president. <laughs> you really don't think you're going to, you can stay away from it? No, I don't know absolutely. if you can stay away. Really? I can stay away from it. Really? I had eight years. It's a long time. I loved it. Loved every minute of it. Yeah. Well, not maybe not every minute of it. <laughs> I loved most of it. But it's a it's a tough life, Washington. You know, it's. I always think about the politicians that, that you know, because I occasionally get drawn into, you can't help it, you get drawn into some political debate with right. somebody yeah. about something, whether it's on TV or not. And I always get exhausted by it. I'm just kind of like, oh, shut up. You know, you're like, I'm not going to think differently because you're yelling. You well, know I what think I mean? That's, but that's the problem now, right. is that the volume's so high. Yeah. And when you watch the shows, and I watch cable news too, I love it. But cable? A, a cable. Or, <laughs> well, I watch the network oh, news yeah, too. Network news I, too yeah. After I've watched the network yeah, I news, understand I watch it. cable news. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and the cable news. Did I look news, fat in this? Yeah. <laughs> But the cable, the cable channels are 24 hours. Yeah. It's intense. 
everybody's yelling at everybody else. I know. Nobody listens to anybody. And after the, yeah, you can get a headache. It gets a little tiring. Yeah, it, it gets does. a little tiring. It does. But uh, listen, I'm going to read this because I've heard it's really good, actually. Um, well, if you read mine, I promise I'll read your memoir, too. <laughs> you shouldn't read mine. <laughs> You wouldn't come back if you read. <laughs> or if you did, you wouldn't be shaking my hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's lovely to talk with you, uh, Condi. Thank you. you for coming. Dr. Condoleezza Rice, everybody. <laughs>I mean, yeah. By your family, you mean, uh, what, four or five children five working children, up chimneys? My two uh, husbands. Two husbands? Yes. That's Polygamy, I believe in it, much like Gaddafi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's all right. You can say anything you like about Gaddafi. Yeah. Uh, Where did yeah. he go? I, I don't know. I think he's probably... If I was Condoleezza Rice, though, I'd be checking under the car and stuff and tell... Yeah, that was a you, weird fact. Yeah, that's a weird that's one, isn't it? That's weird, yeah, yeah, if that's true. Do I you have he's... any weird stalker fans who are also dictators of uh, African countries? <laughs> no. Do you have any weird stalker fans? I hope not. No. Anybody ever sent you some anthrax, for example? No,